Positively Crafting Podcast. That's going <laughs> to... I've been calling it Positively Diddy in like the f past five takes. I'll probably put something at the end so you can see <laughs> what was going on with me and the madness. Okay. So, my name is Nicole, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Hot As Knitter, Hot A Z Z Knitter. I will not change that name ever. <laughs> um, you can find. The Positively Crafting Podcast on YouTube. There, I'm also going to put it in the Positively Podcast group on Ravelry. And also on the Positively Crafting blog. So last week after um, I recorded the episode and I uploaded, I got so much love from you guys. And I want to say thank you to each and every person that commented on YouTube or um, on Instagram. Or even on Ravelry that sent me messages. So thank you guys. And special thanks to Sonia. Because Sonia was like, well, why don't you just change the name of the podcast? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah. Change it to Positively Crafting. Because that's what she said. And I'm like, that's that works for me, Sonia. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Sonia, for naming the podcast Positively Crafting. Because I was really thinking about call it positively, calling it Positively Stitching. But you know, to be honest, I, I think cooking and baking is crafting. And I'm also really wanting to do some work in um, paints and just doodling and drawing. So crafting encompasses, encompasses it all. Ha. <sighs> I am um, happy because this is the last week of school for my kids before spring break. And I'm kind of torn. Okay, happy and huh? Be happy because I don't have to get up in the morning and nag my 14-year-old to get out the bed. Get out the bed. Oh, yeah, by the way, get out the bed or there will be a murder. <laughs> Just saying. Um, so that makes me happy. But I'm uh because... Two teenage boys at home all the time. Yeah, they'll probably go to the park, the ball side, and play basketball with the neighbors and all this stuff. But for the most part, they'll be here eating and drinking me out of house and home. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, eh. To make things worse, Wednesdays, they get out early as it is. They're called flex days here. And um, Friday... They don't even have school. Why not? <laughs> like, why? Okay. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm also happy because my husband is out probably working on his car, tracking down parts for his car or whatever. So, I am free for about 30 minutes. Oh, and I just took out some bread. Well, I baked the bread. Took it out the oven. It's cooling. It smells so good in this house. I haven't baked bread in a hot second, which is probably a couple of months in real people time. <laughs> and it smells good, but from the outcome of the loaf, I can totally tell that I'm out of practice and I need to get back into doing that too. So yeah, but I love making bread. Okay, so you guys, I made show notes which is all oh, amazing right and i mean like they i should just say i jotted down show notes because this morning i was like oh i'm gonna talk about this and i want to talk about that we'll see what i can get to within 30 minutes because you guys know that i can talk <laughs> so we'll get through what we can get through i want to tell you guys all the things you want to hear all the things so what i jotted down are just really really basic sock fabric <laughs> Bread, next episode. That's what we're going to talk about. Let's get into it. Okay, so here is, right here, is my favorite Knitting's My Bag bag at the moment. Because I rotate them like purses. I, what My favorite purse is whichever purse I'm carrying at the moment. And I have Knitting's My Bags bags for every season. But what's awesome is that she's starting to make, well she's starting, she's She's making bags with zippers, so zipper bags. So for those of you who are not fond of the, the um, pull, what are these, drawstring bags, use your words, Nikki. <laughs> um, Lois, Nitty's My Bag, is making uh, zipper bags. So she offers both kinds of bags, and they're well-made. Trust me, she is crazy perfectionist <laughs> in a good way. 
So, in this bag, I have socks of shame. And I'm only showing one because I dropped the other one earlier. <laughs> so, but this is really the most important sock of shame. I finished knitting this whole sock from yarn that Lois gave me about a year ago. Or more. It's been over a year. Um, I finished, but I probably finished knitting these a year ago, right? I have one sock that's completely finished and afterthought heel is done and everything. This one, though, isn't. Do you see this green piece of shameful yarn? Okay. Well, yeah. I don't know why I haven't picked up. We'll rip this out and picked up for an afterthought heel. And for those of you who are new to sock making or haven't even tried sock making, an afterthought heel is just that. It's you get to do all the fun part for me, which is the actual knitting, except for the ribbing. I could care less about ribbing. <laughs> Don't like it. Um, and then, once it's done, you get to rip out this piece of yarn, which is called waist yarn, and pick up the the um, loose stitches, the live stitches, and knit your heel afterwards. For me, that takes about 15 minutes max. Max. Why haven't I done this? What is my problem? I don't know. I might need therapy. <laughs> I have friends who are therapists. <laughs> Maybe I should talk to them about it, or maybe not. But now, since I told you guys about this, you best be believing that on the next episode when I talk about knitting, this is going to be done because I cannot face you and not have this done. Okay, so when I got back my mojo, my knitting mojo that is, instead of picking up this sock and, you know, spending 15 minutes getting it done so I can have a beautiful pair of socks to wear, I cast on... A, a little footsie sock. Yes. Right? So, if you guys watch prior episodes of my podcast, um, you know that when I talk to you about the things that I am making, I like to get into the nitty gritty, the detail about it, the needle size, the um, yarn dyer, the yarn weight, and the techniques that you need to know to make this. And normally I write all of that down in my show notes, which is really why, another reason why I haven't been podcasting, because for some podcasters, um, podcasting is really, it takes up a whole lot of time, because I want to be thorough as possible, because I know that, I just want to tell you guys what I would want to know, <laughs> and I want to know it all. <laughs> Some people would say I do know it. Think I do. I think I do know it all, especially my boys. But I do as far as they're concerned. Anywho, so I'm going to tell you guys what I can remember right now. And eventually I will get into back into the habit of telling you guys all of the details. Especially when it comes to right now the quilting. Because I watch a couple of quilting shows even, like main, like network shows. And to me, they don't tell me enough. I want to know what needle size you use on your stinking Janome machine. Like, you don't need a Janome, but it would be super helpful if I would know if it was an 8012 or 9014 or a micro, like seriously. But that's just probably the nerdy me, but okay, here it is. I digress. Back to the sock, okay. So this sock was made out of one of the very first skeins of yarn that I purchased ever. The dyer of this yarn is Freckle Face, I think Freckle Face Fibers. She she hasn't been dying for years. She no longer dies. And I've tried to make this yarn be a lot of things. Um, a shawl at one point, a, a scarf. It just did not want to be any of those things. But it really makes a nice pair of socks. I use a size one needle and the sock yarn is fingering weight. To make socks, all you need to know how to do is, well, to make them from cuff down, is to cast on. Um, you need to do know how to do ribbing, which is knit and purl. Those are your basic stitches. Um, the kind of heel that I use. Let's talk about this heel, you guys. This is the Sweet Tomato Heel. The Sweet Tomato Heel is a heel of a sock that is made out of, it's made out of three wedges. So one, 
two, three. And I knew that I was going to talk about this. I have hair or something. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I knew I was going to talk about this sock on the podcast. And I really tried to make the heels sections in different colors so you can kind of see. Okay. So there are three wedges. One, two. The bottom wedge for me and my little foot is a half of a wedge. That is the beautiful thing about a sweet tomato heel. It is totally customizable to fit your foot. The sweet tomato heel was um, created by Cat Bordy. You guys, I will link to, especially on YouTube, I'll post the podcast, then I'll go back in and try to link whatever I can in here. But Cat Bordy is on YouTube. Just Google, Google her name, not Google. You could probably just Google Google her name or even type in Sweet Tomato Hill. There are a lot of um, tutorials that have come up, but Cat Bordy is the originator. She made the heel. Her, her tutorial is the most in-depth. I saw it when um, she came out with this heel. I tried it years ago. I loved it immediately because it made me embrace socks. I was not getting down. I could not get down with a heel flap and a gusset and all that stuff. It was just picking up stitches. No. There are no stitches to pick up. None. It is integrated. You do your short rows, and they don't even seem like short rows, but they are. They're a beautiful short row. So you basically work your short rows, um, and and those are nothing. You're, you're not even, there is no wrap and turn involved. You just stop, turn around, and go back the other way. It's... This this heel for me was a game changer. And if you go around the front, you can see that the heel is, is integrated into your sock. So once you do one wedge, you sew around the whole sock a couple of times. Then you sew it on your next wedge. You sew around, sew on your last wedge, and that's it. Beautiful, 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 right? Okay. So I did my heel, and I did the toe a contrasting color, and I cast... I left too many stitches. <laughs> no, I took off too many stitches. I should have left more on because this is a super pointy toe. Although, I have one of those feet where your my big toe is bigger than everything else. So, it kind of works. Kind of. Um, as far as my super short um, ribbing at the top, I just... Did as many as I wanted to. I, for me, my cast on for my socks, 60. I'm skinny. <laughs> and it works. And I can almost go down to 56 stitches when I get to working on my foot. But I, this time, I didn't do it. So this is the one sock that I have done. Here's the problem. I, I can never make the same thing twice immediately, right? So I, it, the yarn, I have a bunch left. Here it is right here. Bunch of this yarn left. This is, oh, excuse me. <laughs> this is it in the, um, the ball, the cake. I, I do. I have a bunch of it left. But I went up in my loft where I keep my yarn and pulled down an, <laughs> another skein of yarn to make another footsie. So I don't know if I'm going to make this one again and and have a kind of sort of matching pair or I'm going to just start another pair of socks or footsies or whatever because that's just how I roll and I am not a I don't think I'm a product knitter I mean I like to get stuff out of it but I do knit for the process I don't know <laughs> I'll figure it out one day when I get that therapy that I mentioned yeah no okay so that's the sock. We'll see. But you guys, at least I did some knitting. <laughs> Yay! Okay. And my husband was arguing arguing with me about well, arguing with me <laughs> about if I knitted the sock um, when we were on our trip to Vegas. I don't think I did. I did. He I told him I didn't, but I really did do some knitting and the, some car knitting. And it's been a while since I've done any car knitting. So yay. All the knitting, right? Okay. So the next thing says, it says fabric, but I think I'm going to skip down and talk to you guys about bread. <laughs> I love making bread. And um, the reason I want to talk to you guys about bread is because I wanted to show you a book that I got from Barnes & Noble's um, this week. And this is 100 Great 
breads, and it's by Paul Hollywood. Look at him young. Get it, Paul. Okay, so Paul Hollywood, if you guys are familiar with the Great British Bake Off, he is the male judge, I love him, on the Great British Bake Off. Now, I have a book already called The Best Ever Book of Bread, right? <laughs> Yeah, I love this book too. But I could not pass up a book by Paul Hollywood and Barnes and Nobles and the price. It was only $7.98. Uh, yeah. And this bread book is really good. What I like about it is that I think it, this is I know for a fact this is an older book because he said recently or I've seen where he said the oh, 2004. Aha, uh -huh, go me. Um He's recently converted to instant yeast, which is what I use. Because there are a couple of kinds of yeast. There's like active yeast and um, instant yeast, which is what I use. And then there's fresh yeast. And the fresh yeast comes in a cake. It stinks to the high heaven, but it kind of smells good to me. I don't know. It's weird. But it will stink up your fridge. I bought um, fresh yeast. My husband took me down to a restaurant store that's like 45 minutes away at least just for it and I've made bread with it and it was good but um he doesn't use fresh yeast anymore but in this book when he was just exclusively using fresh yeast he tells you to reduce the amount of um if you're using instant yeast which is what I use to reduce it by 25 percent yeah that's some math I have to do thank God for calculators and teenagers that are going to be home for <laughs> spring break maybe I'll have Nick sit down with his calculator and go through every recipe <laughs> and write how much yeast instant yeast I should use so yeah this book is so good I haven't made anything from it yet I've seen a couple of things I might make one of them is um, the Irish soda bread which is bread that is made from baking soda. That's the name, right? Um, I have a cousin. Stay with me, you guys, okay? So, my cousin's daughter. <laughs> and I have a second cousin. She goes to the high school with my kids. She's a year ahead of Jason. So, she's a junior. She'll be a senior next year. She has a teacher who is... Irish and because this is around the time oh yeah this Thursday as a matter of fact is St. Patrick's Day the kids are having a party her class and um, they are in competition to make the best party with the best Irish thing but he doesn't want it to be just green and no leprechauns because he doesn't want any leprechauns and I'm thinking that one of the things to help put her class over the top would be to make a batch of Irish soda bread and send it with her to school also Irish soda bread does not take long at all